Hi, I'm Warren Bites, the StatsCan software development and training team. Thanks for joining me on this fastest demo of our Digital Sky Dark Matter platform that I have added to Dark Matter is a digital planetarium, a show control system, and a media control system all in one. It's everything you need to produce and perform wonderfully choreographed programs for your dome. Naturally, we have all the traditional functions of a sky simulator, including twilight scattering effects, stars, planets, constellation overlays, coordinate grids, and much, much more. Of course, we model the cosmos in 3D so that we can support flights in interplanetary, interstellar, and intergalactic space. It's always nice to have something to see once you've traveled hundreds of millions of kilometers. Here on Mars, we've embedded a little vignette of the Curiosity rover right into the landscape. This is a highly detailed and fully articulated model, and we scripted some push buttons that can make the rover do its thing on command in a live show. This is just an example. You can embed models anywhere you want to make them do whatever you want. We also have the new Insight rover. Oh, and here's another fun one, which you may remember from the last IPS, a 3D model of a Tesla car. Dark Matter supports conventions for spacecraft trajectory definitions, as well as orbital elements. Perhaps someday a Tesla will be equipped to display the sky in infrared, or some other wavelength. But why wait? Dark Matter does it today. Dark Matter supports a myriad of astrophysical databases in our galaxy and beyond. If the one you want wasn't present, you can add it and share it with the other users on our online forum. Some databases evolve rapidly and you want to stay up to date. Our online data center automatically connects to leading online databases and syncs Dark Matter with them. When you add a new exoplanet system using our online data center, you can fly right up to it, or to its planet, or planets, and you can discover whether they are a gas giant or a rocky one. We also support the European Southern Observatory's Data to Dome initiative. I just used it to look up the new comet. There is more to science communication than data. There is sequencing of ideas and storytelling. With Dark Matter, you can configure custom control pages for each of your shows or lessons, and for each of your users. And for each of your users, or for the different kind of shows, you can use different kind of workspaces. Because there's more to science than astronomy, we offer a wide range of other visualizations and datasets. You can easily add your own. Let's have a look at an example. Here is the Science in a Sphere overlay, which you can use to teach geology. Here you can map textures on a planet to show various things, for instance, the Fukushima tsunami. You can also use videos to further explain. And, since there's more to life than science, we support layering of abstract patterns set to music for weekend entertainment shows. Visual layering is crucial in dark matter. With it, we can combine pre-rendered full-tone clips, music set to abstract patterns, external video streams, of course me, and even third-party full-dome applications into seamless presentations. We welcome and support full-dome applications on SkyScan systems. One of the best is called Worldwide Telescope. Let's learn more about it. 
Worldwide Telescope is a free open source system that can run in full dome, including any SkyScan installation. The WWT project is overseen by the nonprofit American Astronomical Society, or AAS, the professional organization for astronomers in North America, like me. AAS servers host terabytes of real data that you can stream to your dome to show in WWT sky mode, and it's easy to add your own data too. Even better, since WWT is free and easy to use, students can use it to create their own shows at home and then bring them to your dome to play back. WWT can even run in web browsers, on smartphones, or just about any other device, allowing you to bring your shows to a whole new audience. Because WWT works great on flat screens as well as the dome, it's a powerful tool for live streaming. To show what I mean, David Weigel of the Intuitive Planetarium at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center will demonstrate how he uses WWT to stay connected with his audience even when they can't visit in person. Worldwide Telescope is both simple and advantageous to use for live streaming to remote communities in that you can give your standard tour of the night sky where you're pointing out things like stars and constellations and the like, but you can also explore a variety of different all-sky surveys and data in context. So as we zoom around the sky, you'll notice that the context bar at the bottom of the screen changes and updates as you change your field of view. And so this shows you what's visible within the screen and available for exploration in real time. If we were to zoom in on, say, the Triangulum Galaxy, we could improve this imagery by overlaying uh, Hubble's giant mosaic on top of it. So we can simply uh, click on this once and it will center it in the field of view for us and overlay it in context. And then we can uh, compare and contrast a background imagery and also explore this enormous data set. Now, if the background imagery is uh, not what you desire, then you can switch that up as well. And for example, we could improve on this imagery by adding PanStars data to the background. So we can right click that, set it as background imagery, and then compare for something like NGC 602 in here. Now, you can pre-curate what you're interested in using within a presentation by setting up what's known as a collection. So any picture that you find here, you can right click and add to a collection. And as uh, you do so, you can click on whatever picture within that collection to easily jump to it. So for example, this is a picture or a collection of all of my favorite Hubble pictures to commemorate its 30th anniversary. And we can zoom to the Cosmic Reef Nebula, which is recently released. We will have to change back to the digitized sky survey uh, in order to have background data though. And as we zoom into this, you can see a beautiful stellar nursery. Now, if Worldwide Telescope doesn't have the imagery that you're looking for, or perhaps it's your own astrophotography, then you can simply import that uh, by going to the Explore tab, clicking Open, and then adding an astronomical image. And as long as that image has astronomy virtual metadata tagged in it, then it will populate within Worldwide Telescope in the correct position with proper orientation and scale for you to explore. So in this case, uh, we've loaded up NGC 4302 and NGC 4298, which are these orthogonal uh, spiral galaxies that give us a, a neat perspective. And now can explore this with our audiences. So happy exploring to you and go have fun. There's a whole lot more to AAS Worldwide Telescope than we're able to show right now. The new version 6.0 of the WWT application, available for download now as a beta release, Add support for the latest VR headsets and the HIPS data format used by researchers to share all sky data sets. That's on top of WWT's already rich feature set, including things like its 3D mode and its easy to use editor for creating your own shows. And don't forget, all this comes for free because the Worldwide Telescope project is open source and not for profit. Because the American Astronomical Society is the Society for Professional Astronomers in North America, we're always looking to get the latest research data sets into the WWT content library and from there into your dome. If you'd like to learn more about AAS Worldwide Telescope, we'd love to connect. You can ask questions on our online forum at wwt-forum.org. We've got lots of documentation at docs.worldwidetelescope.org, and all of our source code is shared on GitHub. Finally, to sign up for the WWT newsletter and discover our social media accounts, visit worldwidetelescope.org connect 
We hope to hear from you soon.